Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us uh, start this lecture with a thought process from Albert Einstein who says look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. But unfortunately we do not have time to look deep into nature and nor we understand anything <coughs> in life or in otherwise. So in the last lecture we basically looked at a, a very simplified uh, analysis based on the phenomenology, what is happening then trying to relate that those things. Uh, and we have seen that uh, we can derive a relationship for uh, laminar uh, flame height uh, or flame, flame length, sometimes people call it flame length also for a jet diffusion flame and we have extended that analysis for uh, turbulent jet diffusion flame and we have seen it is uh, roughly uh, matching uh, at least the trend of the experimental data. And uh, now uh, we will be looking at laminar flames and we look at uh, uh, theoretical analysis of this and we are considering here a two dimensional uh, jet diffusion flame. Here that is a two slots are there right, these are the two slots. And, uh, these are two passages with two dimensional having L, L1 is the length and this L2 minus L1 this portion right which is uh, in which oxidizer is passing through. Keep in mind that this is the x direction and y direction and z direction in this way right. And this flame is basically two dimensional in nature okay. You can call it as a slot burner. Slot burner because it is like a slot right and generally uh, people uh, do not use that much uh, except maybe this thing people always be happy with the tube burner or the jet uh, uh, kind of thing burner. So, where you know you use a circular pipe or some other pipe and then use it. <coughs> and uh, we will be uh, using this analysis for this two dimensional diffusion flame because this is basically 2D diffusion flame right. This is a diffusion flame and 2D in nature that means what it is basically changing with respect to x and y and the z direction it is not changing at all right. That is why it is 2D and people will be always be happy with the axis symmetric burner also right. Let us consider is a simple one and uh, we will make some assumption and some of the assumption will be repeated or whatever we have done for phenology will be valid here. That is first is this is a two dimensional steady laminar in viscid flow. That means it is not viscous, viscous if it is not there and is a steady. And velocity above the channel right, these are the channels right, these are all channel. the channel uh, through which fuel is passing and this is another channel right. right. <coughs> Where uh, the velocity above the channel that means here it will be uh, remaining constant right kind of things you can say that right and uh, it would not be changing and uh, we will be using basically thin flame approximation I have already discussed in which fuel oxidizer react in stoichiometric proportion at the flame surface uh, with finite infinite reaction rate. That means reaction rate will be very very fast right and uh, that means what is the meaning of this? That means on this flame surface right if it is oxidizer is coming passing through it, it won't cross this flame surface right. It won't enter into that means no oxygen will be found in this region where 
right in this region no fuel will be found no fuel will be passing uh, through the uh, flame surface and reaching the oxidizer stream or oxidizer side right that is the thing that means at the flame surface in this flame surface what will be y f will be 0 and what else y oxidizer also will be 0 at flame surface. Keep in mind this is your flame surface right and that we call it as a thin flame approximation. And a binary diffusion between participating species right we are saying only fuel and oxidizer is there two species which will be playing important role, but in real situation it would not be why because the chemical reaction will be taking place when chemical reaction taking place there will be several number of species which will be participating right and that too if it is a jet diffusion flame soot will be coming there will be patch and there will be some other things which will be quite complex right. So, uh, however, we will be doing for simplicity and mass diffusion is along the x direction that means the mass has to diffuse in this direction only in the x direction there would not be any mass diffusion in the y direction. However, both the diffusion should be there we had seen, but here the mass diffusion along the y direction is predominant as compared to the mass diffusion along the y because along the y what will be predominant the momentum will be predominant ok along the y direction vertical direction right. So, therefore, as compared to the mass diffusion along the x the y direction mass diffusion is negligibly small that is the meaning of this. <coughs> and unity Lewis number unity Lewis number means basically uh, alpha that is thermal diffusivity is equal to mass diffusivity right and uh, that means uh, that is the things what uh, it will be unity Lewis number for L e is equal to 1 <coughs> and single step chemistry which will be there uh, single step chemistry means is a one mole of fuel is reacting with new moles of oxidizer going to the product of new one per uh, new plus one uh, kg of the product. And uh, radiative heat transfer is negligibly small, but flame surface always will be radiation will be you know, but we are not considering like in the pre mix place also we did not consider that. And constant thermophysical properties as usual we have taken this assumption and mass diffusivity for both fuel and oxidizer are same that means d f of oxidizer between is equal to d oxidizer fuel basically that you know between this binary both are same need not to be same but we are considering it to be same and buoyancy effect is neglected that means there is no effect of buoyancy in this case what we are considering so with this uh, uh, these things we will have to now look at the uh, various uh, mass conservation equations. Keep in mind that uh, what we are saying that velocity above the channel you know is uh, basically remaining constant everywhere that means the V x if you look at is uh, basically along with the uh, x direction what will be the V x? will be 0 only the dominant velocity is v y that is the thing what we will be considering. So, uh, let us look at conservation equation mass conservation uh, for the steady flow we know that uh, this is dou rho v x uh, divided by dou x plus dou rho v y divided by dou y is equal to 0 and in this case there is a v x is not is not changing in this flame region. So, therefore, this term will be 0 as V x is 0 that we are considering. Means uh, what is saying is basically that is with assumption 2 what you have done that is with this what we are saying is that rho V x is equal to 0 if we integrate is rho V y is constant right. 
that means v y and this uh, density you know which will be remaining constant uh, throughout this flame domain right in the along the this region that is the meaning of this. <coughs> and we will uh, look at uh, y momentum because x momentum already is 0, so we are not considering. So, uh, axial momentum uh, what we are considering along the y direction is rho v x uh, do rho v x v y divided by do x plus do v y v y divided by do y is equal to do by do x mu do v y by do x and rho infinity minus rho is into g right. And this is basically done you know uh, because of fact that you might be knowing this rho g is the gravitational effect right and rho infinity is the uh, outside ambient thing what we will be taking talking about and that is due to the brosiness approximation because the pressure gradient in the y direction is approximate the rho infinity g right which is an approximation okay which is uh, known as brosiness approximation that we will be doing and uh, keep in mind that this is uh, we are not considering the buoyancy effect therefore this will be zero okay and uh, this v x as it is 0. So, this term will be 0 right and uh, this is the inviscid flow. So, therefore, this term will be 0 right and then uh, rho v right uh, is basically this is rho v y is, is equal to 0 this is uh, because the remaining constant. So, therefore, this also will be. So, there is no need uh, to solve any momentum equation as such right. Now, we will be looking at looking at uh, this thing uh, this is the species conservation equation as a right that is rho v x uh, do rho v x y f do x plus do rho v y y f do y is equal to uh, do do x rho d 1 2 that is basically fuel to oxidize the do f x into mass generation of the fuel per unit volume right. <coughs> and similarly, for the oxidizer we can have in the similar way and um, keep in mind that this is uh, both are same I could have put that uh, d 1 2 is equal to d 2 1 right. It could have been basically 2 1 right that is why I am putting that uh, 1 2. So, uh, this is again the, there is a source term for the oxidizer and uh, product of course, I need not to write if mass per, uh, because if I solve this equation and get the mass product uh, you can get very easily y p is equal to 1 minus y f minus oxidizer right. If I get this both the thing you can get very easily. So, if you simplify this uh, equation what you will get this v x is 0 right this term will be 0 as uh, v x is 0 right. And uh, similarly, this also will be 0 right. So, you will get uh, basically uh, right uh, these equations uh, whichever is there. Now, how to solve this is the very important aspect one has to look at it because we are having non-linear terms. These terms are non-linear terms right and this is of course, the second derivative terms right which is there has to be looked at. So, question arises how you will be uh, solving this is a very important one. <coughs> what we will be doing for that? Uh, we will be using a thin flame approximation right. That is what is that thin flame approximation at this surface right. What will happen that is uh, basically m dot at the flame surface right. This will be all these will be occurring that means, the fuel will be getting consumed right because this will be mass will be fuel will be getting consumed and then oxidizer will be getting consumed right is not it. Fuel and oxidizer will be reacting and then getting the product, product will be formed. So, at this flame surface this all these 
terms will be there. But if I look at this point, this place, is it like uh, mass of the fuel will be consumed? There will be any reaction term here? No reaction, right? Where? In this domain, this region uh, along with the Z, nothing, no reaction will be occurring. Similarly, in this region, right, except the flame surface, there will not be any, any reaction. That means, this term will be 0. If you look at m dot f will be 0 here, right, and f cannot get into, you know, oxidizer cannot get into. So, therefore, that does not arise. Similarly, in this region, what will happen? m dot triple dash oxidizer will be 0. Are you getting? At the flame surface, this term will be there. Which one? Source term of the fuel and oxidizer will be active where? On the flame surface. Apart from the flame surface, this will be 0. On the fuel side, m dot triple dash f will be 0. On the oxidized side, m dot triple dash oxidizer will be 0. That you should keep in mind. Are you getting? This is the thing which is will be used to look at that. Okay. I will uh, do again tell you that thing. So, because that will be getting into that, because at the thin flame approximation, so what you will be getting is right. If you look at that for uh, this thin flame approximation, right, m dot f will be 0 on flame side, uh, sorry on fuel side. side of flame, right, m dot triple dash, uh, triple dash oxidizer will be 0 on oxidizer side of flame. I think flame I should not, okay, let me write, all right. basically from the flame onwards that is the thing, that is the surface. So, if that is a 0, then what will happen? You will get a, uh, you will get, if I look at the fuel uh, equation that is dou by dou y, I can write down rho v y, y f is equal to d by d x rho 1 to y f by x, right. Right, because this is 0, this is 0, right. So, I can write down that as basically if I take this out right inside and rho v y is constant, right, because rho v y is constant we have already seen from the continuity equation. So, therefore, I can take it out, I can write down that as rho v, I can say write rho v y d y f by d y is equal to rho d 1 by 2 do y f square by do x square, this is cancel it out, right. I am just doing that here, because as rho y is constant, already we have seen from the continuity equation. So, that means, uh, I can also uh, write down in the similar way for the oxidizer side, right. So, similar way I can write down V y uh, dou y o x dou y is equal to dou uh, d 1 to dou uh, square y o x divided by dou x square. So, this is the another equation one can think of like to simplify the solve and this will be valid where everywhere apart from the flame surface <laughs> are you getting that means, this is valid for what this side, right? And this equation is valid for oxidizer side. This is for oxidizer side. This is fuel side. And this equation won't be valid on the flame surface. This, this both the equation won't be valid 
on the flame surface. Is that clear? And flame is a very thin one, like you can say it is thin, infinitely thin. Okay, that is the condition what we are doing. So again, uh, let me repeat that is the above two equation can only be applied to the outside of the flame surface as both an oxidizer fuel get consumed instantly at the flame surface right as soon as it will come it will be consumed that is all it is very thin. So, now we will have to try to solve these equations 1 and 2 which is a so let us look at single step irreversible reaction that is fuel uh, one mole of fuel is reacting with or one can new moles of oxidizer going to the product of nu plus 1 mole of product. So, uh, if you look at this reaction as m dot triple that uh, double mass flux of fuel right is equal to oxidizer by nu is equal to minus product by nu plus 1 uh, because you see I have taken minus this side that is all. And uh, from this we can uh, basically look at this m dot flux is uh, equal to what? This is equal to this m dot f if you look at is equal to rho d 1 to d y f by d x. If you look at this is my flame right flame f you are coming from this side minus flame right f you can say and similarly I can do for the oxidizer as well right. Okay. And uh, similarly, I can write down of oxidizer is uh, by nu is nothing but rho d by nu uh, oxidizer by dx. Of course, positive side this is I can say negative side here. I mean like you basically uh, flame surface this is flame f and it is coming from uh, negative side and this is the positive side I am saying. So, uh, if you look at this is basically um, this d y f by d x f is equal nothing but 1 by nu d y by d x at f. So, from this I can say very easily that y f is equal to y y f is equal to minus y oxidizer nu and which is nothing but your y r and this is your universal variable right. One of them if I will get that that means all these equation 1 and 2 right I can uh, uh, keep in mind that rate of fuel transport from in center to the flame surface is equal to a stoichiometric rate of uh, this uh, proportion right that is the meaning what is saying and uh, y f be the mass fraction of the reactant instead of solving two equation of fuel oxide we can solve a single equation and that is basically I can say v y dou y r divided by dou y is equal to d 1 to dou square y r by dou x square. So, I can put that thing and then do that this is my equation we need to solve right and this is the universal variable that is y r this is your universal variable right. So, instead of solving one uh, two uh, I am solving the one equation. So, let us say this is your equation number 3. So, in the next lecture we will be basically uh, looking at how to solve this equation and get a uh, some kind of a uh, flame surface and other thing. Okay, thank you very much.